What is up, guys? It is the Blue Bloods here, back with another week one preview, man. We dropped three yesterday. We covered some huge matchups, including Ohio State, Minnesota, a huge Big Ten matchup, Boise State, UCF, also the Mayo Bowl with App State and East Carolina. So go check those out, too. If you're new, real quick, man, I would really appreciate if y'all subscribe. Appreciate any support you can give to the Blue Bloods, man. We got so much great content coming y'all's way for the season and big plans even already for the all season so make sure to support now and subscribe but let's get right into it man we have an interesting matchup one that if i told you like some years some years ago that texas and louisiana lafayette matched up in week one in austin and it might be one of the best games of the weekend you probably look at me a little weird and on top of that telling you that it's a ranked matchup also might kind of have you looking sideways like are you are, are you being serious right now because right now number 23 losing in a lafayette the raging cajuns headed to austin texas to face the 21st ranked texas longhorns right now texas is an eight point favorite the game kicks off at 3 30 p.m central time live on fox um and for me, man, if you have if you have like a friend who isn't really into college football and they're looking for like an underrated game to watch, make sure they and yourself are tuned in to Austin, Texas this upcoming weekend because th this game is going to be amazing, in my opinion. You have so many storylines. You look at the Texas Longhorns making their debut under Steve Sarkeesian, his first game as a head coach since leaving Alabama this all season, and also Sam Ellinger's gone. It feels like he's been at Texas for like 15 years now. Well, they got a new guy in charge. Hudson Card has been named the starter. Um, Casey Thompson is still expected to see some action, but it's Hudson Card's team first snap reps for our guy Card. Rate the Raging Cajuns though come into this season in which they probably expect to really win the Sun Belt this year. Coastal Carolina will be a big threat, but they're looking to start their second straight season with a dominant win over a Big 12 team. Last year, they absolutely dominated Iowa State 31-14 to in Ames, and that Iowa State team ended up going on to almost – almost to win the Big 12 title last year. So this is not a game you can overlook. And I know a lot of average college football fans are, but I know Longhorns fans aren't. And I know Billy Napier has this Raging Cages fan base absolutely pumped and excited for this game. And personally, I would rank this a top five game this weekend. There's some great games this weekend. I am absolutely pumped for this one. And so I want to start with the keys to Texas winning, because I know a lot of channels are really looking at Hudson card is the key. That's what, that's what a lot of channels are going to tell you a lot of experts, but I disagree here wholeheartedly. The goal here, the key here for Texas is Bajan Robinson in this offensive line. They are going to have to impose their will on the raging cages defense. And I'll get into why, you know, Hudson Card isn't my um, isn't my X factor or my key for Texas. I'll get to that in the matchups to watch. But for me, looking at what Brajan Robinson did last year, in which toward the end of the year, he was arguably one of the best running backs in the country at that time. He, he just hit his peak midway through his freshman season, totaled over 900 total yards, six touchdowns. What he needs to do, while this is important for Texas, if he can take the pressure off a card, I personally, what I think is going to happen is one, Texas can control the clock. Two, it's going to ease up that secondary, which is honestly one of the strengths for this Raging Cajuns team. That secondary returns every starter and every significant contributor that you that they could bring back possibly on that defense. So it's not going to be a light a light attack or an easy attack for Hudson Card in the passing game. The O-line, while wow, this is a key, the O-line for Texas returns a lot of starters. I know Samuel Cosme is off to the NFL, but there are two or three, four guys on this offensive line that I think have major potential. And this is one of the best offensive lines in the Big 12. I believe Pro Football Focus had it ranked third in the conference. What they need to do is impose their will, 
break this defense down and do what a lot of power five versus group of five matchups are in which is close early, but the power five team has the advantage of the trenches and they impose their will and break that team down and toward the end of the game, pull away because usually these teams don't have depth. That's easier than that's easier said than done against this Raging Cages team, which has more depth and is probably a top five group of five team in the country. But Bajan Robinson has to be the focal point of the offense. You don't want you came out of this quarterback competition with Hudson Card almost winning by default, it seemed like. There's still some people, and it seems like there's a lot of the fan base of the Texas Longhorns that think Casey Thompson is still going to see a lot of time. So if you're not fully trusting and not fully invested in what Hudson Card can bring, why would you put your season on the line with him the first week when you should be able to run the ball effectively? And that's something that as great as uh, Brees Hall was last year for Iowa State, one of his lowest yardage totals of the season was against this ULL team, and it cost him the game along with some other stuff. But – for me, the O-line and Bajan Robinson have to be the key for Texas to win this game, in my opinion. And now looking at Louisiana Lafayette, though, what are the keys for them to win? It has to be Levi Lewis. It's his die making, it's his a dynamic playmaking ability. It's his it's his ability to be the focal point of the offense week in and week out. But now he has to carry this offense early as they try to replace. Some of two of the best backs in the country last year and Trey Raggis and Elijah Mitchell, who were one of the best one two punches in the country, not just a group of five. And both of them, were, I believe, are still on NFL rosters. Elijah Mitchell got drafted, I believe, so did uh, Trey. But what they have to do is allow Levi Lewis, who's now a fifth year player, to really come into his own and pick up some of the slack that the wide receiving core running back room are going to have. When you look at what he's done so far, though, thrown for over 6,200 yards, 54 touchdowns while limiting his turnovers to 14, while also rushing for nine touchdowns in over 700 yards. He has to raise his level so he can carry this unproven wide receiving core, which is ranked at the bottom three of the Sun Belt. The Raging Cages need someone to step up. Now, what Lewis can do is make plays out the pocket, make some plays with his legs, and put the ball in perfect spots for the wide receivers. That way they allow their athleticism to take over. You know, you've got Damari Overshone on Texas's squad, who's the main safety and probably one of the top safety prospects in the country. But really and truly, I, I don't think there's any game-stopping or shutdown cornerbacks that Texas has. It's there for the taking. So what Levi Lewis has to do is make sure he distributes the ball to his playmakers and make sure they he puts them in the best position to succeed. And also, Chris Smith is expected to take over that running back one position. If he can't replicate what, what Trey Raggis and Elijah Mitchell brought to the Raging Cajuns last year, then I think this, this game – is going to be a very hard upset win for the Raging Cajuns. He's but he's averaged over seven yards per carry, but it's really going to come down to the offensive line has to win the battle against the Stout Texas defensive line because if they can run, if because if they can rush, if they can rush the ball, control the clock, everything like that, then I think losing Lafayette will be much more efficient and productive on the offensive side of the ball. They struggled on the offensive side of the ball against Iowa State, but were bailed out with a pump return and a kick return touchdown, which really were two of the deciding factors in that game, along with Brock Purdy playing a fairly t bad game, I would say. For me, though, if Chris Smith and Levi Lewis can't carry this offense, then it's going to be a tough time. because I think Texas is going to be able to count on Bajan Robinson to go out there and make some plays for them. The matchup to watch, though, in my opinion, is the Texas wide receivers. You know, there's a few that are great. Jo Joshua Moore, I think, is one of the potential breakout players in the Big 12. That group of wide receivers with Moore against the Louisiana Lafayette secondary, who, like I said, returns every significant piece on the back end of their defense. Joshua Moore is the top wide receiver, but outside of that, core they're mostly unproven i'm not going to say untalented or weak i'm just going to say unproven they haven't proved it on the biggest stage xavier worthy jordy whittington and marcus washington are some guys that i think have the talent to be productive wide receivers in this long offense 
Steve Sarkeesian. This is his biggest test, guys. Everyone said his offense is amazing, this and that, but there are some critics out there who says it was the talent he had at Bama. We're going to find out this year which it was because this Texas wide receiving core is not Devontae Smith, not John Mechie, not Billingsley, not Najee Harris. This offense, he has Bajon Robinson, who I think is a great running back, but the wide receiving core does not have that Devontae Smith or John Mechie. But they do have some athletic guys who I just think have not been put in positions to succeed. So I want to see what those j names I just named can do on this big stage. When you look at the ULL secondary, it's headlined by Braylon Trahan and Makai Gardner. Those two guys were cornerstone to this pass defense. That was a top 10 pass defense in the country last year, guys. So this UK team is no scrub. They were also top five in EPA per pass last season. So they were one of the most efficient units in the country in stopping the pass. The raging cages are going to come in. Billy Napier is one of the best coaches in the country. This is not going to be a sleepwalk game for Texas. Now, this was this is probably out of all the games this weekend, I would say a top three game in terms of upset potential for for in the country for Texas. You have to come out and play a good game. If Texas comes out and Hudson Card stutters, Steve Sarkeesian's play calling is off, you have turnovers, you don't execute on the offensive line, but John Robinson can't get going, and you allow Levi Lewis to make plays outside the pocket, and you allow Chris Smith to get going. Louisiana Lafayette will absolutely win the, win the game if that happens. Now, I'm going to go with Texas 24 21 in Austin. I think this is going to come down to like a last second field goal, possibly, or just like a one last scoring drive where Texas takes the lead late and it's too late for Louisiana Lafayette to make a play. I'm predicting a very back and forth game. I'm predicting a defensive focus game, low scoring, competitive physical, and I think Texas is going to be in for a dogfight. But for me, I think Bajan Robinson is probably going to be the MVP for Texas. I think he's going to have a big day on the ground. I think Steve Sarkeesian understands you can't just throw Hudson Carr to the Wolves, especially with such a such an experienced and dynamic secondary who was one who I believe that secondary led the Sun Belt in interceptions. Got multiple guys with multiple interceptions last year. So you just can't throw your young quarterback who's only thrown three passes to the Wolves. So I expect a heavy dose of power runs and Bajan, a heavy dose of Bajan Robinson all weekend. I think Texas is able to shorten up this game make just enough plays to avoid the upset to avoid the upset and squeak out with the week one win. And they have to get ready for Arkansas next week, who I also think is a very, very difficult game for the Longhorns. But as this game has so much upset potential, I was like this close to picking Louisiana Lafayette, but Bajan Robinson is my X factor that convinced me otherwise. So guys, Comment below your thoughts about the game. What players are you looking forward to? What are your keys to victory? And what are your score predictions? That's your homework. If you made it this far, stop right now. Comment below what your score predictions are and thoughts about the game. And also, guys, please hit that subscribe button. Join the Blue Bloods, man. I promise you won't regret it. We have the best and the most high-quality content coming out on YouTube for independent podcasts and show. So, Thank y'all for y'all support, man. I'm pumped for this weekend's games. Comment below y'all's thoughts, and we'll be back very soon with another preview. But for the Blue Bloods, man, we are out.